One of the things that uh, I make are these signs right here. These are 30 inches tall, long, however you want to put it. And I do it in various widths. Uh, they're laser engraved. Uh, the problem is I cannot do them in one shot. I have to do them in sections because you can't put 30 inches and engrave it all at once on a 400 millimeter base laser. So what I have here in this box is an 800 millimeter square laser from Zibetu. I believe that's the way you pronounce it. We're going to put this together coming up. We're going to call this Prelude to a Laser Assembly. I'm shooting this after this has been put together. So I wanted to put this at the very beginning of the video before we get into everything else. This is Zibetu M81 laser. If you've put lasers together before, or if you've never put one together before, I encourage you to watch this all the way through because there are some things you're going to need to know that I will point out as we go and I'll have another thing at the end going over a couple of these details because although this is a good laser, I don't want to discourage anybody from getting one. There are some things in this manual that are not really clear. There is an assembly video on the SD card that comes with it, but it's done in high speed, let's say. It's, uh, it's like a fast forward thing, so you have to really pay attention. You'll miss a lot of things. There's some details that weren't covered. Again, I'm not, I don't want to discourage anybody from getting this. This laser works fine. I've done tests on it now. But there are some assembly things that you're going to need to know, and you're going to be looking at it. But perhaps you're going to be watching the video as I'm assembling it, and you're going to say, well, that's wrong. That's backwards. I did make a couple of mistakes, and I'm not going to edit those out. I'm going to point them out in there so you don't do the same. So with that said, get on with it. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And what I've got here, as I mentioned at the beginning, is a Zibay 2 laser, 800 millimeter square work area. That's going to be roughly twice the size of my other ones. Uh, you, the very foreground up there, you can see the end of one of my X-Tool D1 lasers. But I needed something to be able to do these long signs without having to do it in sections. I'd like to make my uh, pattern in light burn all in one run and just run it all at once. So a 30 inch long sign, of course I don't go right out to the tips of it, but I will be able to get that onto an 800 millimeter format laser. So I do know that this requires assembly and a lot of it. It doesn't come all pre-assembled like some do. So you see this box right here, it's not all that big, but it's got an 800 millimeter square laser in it. So we're going to get this unpacked and see what we got how much assembly we're going to need and I'll take you through putting this together step by step. First I gotta get everything out of the box. Make sure I got everything. I have opened the box because when I got it I saw there was this big hole in the top of it from it hitting something and shipping. So I open this up. There's a protective cardboard inside and then I lifted that up. Well there's foam underneath that and where this poke through actually went in between two parts so it didn't hurt anything. Okay and getting into the parts and pieces there is a manual in here and I did briefly look at it last night. It just came yesterday and it appears to be well written but there is a lot of assembly steps to this because this is not one of those pre-assembled lasers. So what do we got here? We'll start at this end. We get a little fill -em up screwdriver, a USB cable, belts which are partially attached here and of course you get them little cheesy junk glasses if, if you're going to get serious about using a laser and this does have a, I assume this has a shield on it you need to get some good laser goggles or laser glasses I have uh, actual good goggles that are designed for that wavelength for the blue diode laser and the proper color is orange is that cancels blue if you look at a color wheel. I actually did a video on that a while back, but I won't be using those. I'll be using my goggles. Some more parts out of here. This appears to be all of the hardware. We got a couple little uh, tools there, a little stamp seal wrench, a couple of alien wrenches. 
stepper motor and what I like about this laser is it has limit switches. I like to work from absolute coordinates and if you don't have a laser that homes and has limit switches it's difficult to get set up. Yeah, I'm not real sure what I got in here. Can't see it. Oh, that's going to be your focusing for the z-axis. We have another stepper motor here. This would be the motherboard and it will mount to the front and I even got some buttons on the back. Don't know what they do yet. I'll have to get into looking at that. I do kind of wish this was completely enclosed, but we'll uh, see how this is once it's on the laser. Power supply. Oh, that unplugs. Just say I ended up with a European one, but there's a, uh, an adapter for that that obviously won't use because I'm in the U.S. There's your power supply. And of course we have the laser head. We get this foam out of the way here. And we have the extrusions. So my mistake on the size there is uh, 800 by 400 I believe. Running out of places to put things here. Yep, it's 800 by 400. Okay, in this hardware package here we have a belt. couple of curled up zip ties, have a uh, TF card, micro SD card, whatever you want to call it with a card reader. And then we have the balance of the hardware. These are the feet, they're acrylic. And they go on three corners, the motherboard becomes your other, your fourth corner. Some small screws here with uh, nylon spacers. And I like to use a little magnetic tray to keep all my hardware in. Some hammerhead nuts and some screws. These are all Phillips in here. We have the corner brackets and we have these knurled nuts. There doesn't appear to be a whole lot of hardware there other than I know this is going to take quite a bit of assembly. Part of this is pre-assembled. Uh, the hammerhead nuts are already on the this acrylic. And the little wrench in here is 10 millimeter by 8 millimeter. It would be probably to adjust your eccentrics on your trolleys. And you have a couple of hex key wrenches. Okay, and then looking through the manual here a little bit, one of the first things you're going to need to do, this is your uh, x-axis stepper motor. It goes on the x-axis gantry. See so you have a limit switch here, and it, right now it's pointing in towards the stepper motor. This needs to be reversed so that this little limit switch is sticking out. And I can see why they shipped it that way. That way that will not get damaged. So you just need to take these two little Phillips screws loose here. And there's a nylon spacer underneath. You have to watch you don't lose. Oh, there's nuts on the back. wonder why they didn't just spin off of there. So as it sits like this, you need to now rotate it 180 degrees so that that limit switch is now pointing out. You know, your holes line back up and just tighten the screws back up. Don't get crazy here, you'll break that printed circuit board. Just get them snug. So when you get done, it should look like this with the switch pointing out. You'll know right away when you go to slide your extrusion in because if you leave it pointed that way, it isn't going to go in. Now, if you look at your extrusions, there's three different sizes. You have two this size, two that are longer, and one that's longer than the rest. That one is your carriage for the x-axis, and it runs on the y-axis. So this, just simply, and there's no up, down, anything, it's all the same all the way around. This just slips right through here like this. And this is, well that's adjusted pretty good. I'm not even have to fool with the eccentrics on that. This just rides on there. 
like so. Okay, to assemble the frame, the L brackets, I'm going to turn this up so it'll be make it a little bit easier to see. So you'll want this in here with the um, hex set screw towards the inside. And I'm going to just snug this up a little bit so it's not sliding all over the place. I'm not going to tighten that up yet completely. The other axis goes so that your Phillips screw will be to the outside. So it sits like this. Then you'll want to get that corner square. This is where I'm going to need to loosen that up just a hair. You want to get real exact, you can use a machine of square, but this will do for what I'm doing here. So that is perfectly square there. I can tighten that hex down the rest of the way. Now on this front corner, you'll need to take one of the hammerhead nuts. That's what one of these are. And you need to slide it in the extrusion. I probably could have done it ahead of time. You need to slide that in so that these little, the little, I don't know what you call it, the raised part be facing you. And you need to have that on the outside over here. That just slips in the extrusion. Because on this corner is where the motherboard goes. which is this right here. So you'll be putting this, what I would call upside down, because it's easier to assemble things this way in this case. One screw will go into the corner of the extrusion, the other end of that hammerhead nut we just put in there. You want to take one of your screws here and find that little hammerhead nut first, just get it started. Then over here, you'll find that other hole which should line up with your corner bracket don't get crazy with tightening that up you'll crack that acrylic and then again this should be done on a flat surface so you can keep everything square I'll just move over here to the other corner moving over here to the other corner again I'm just gonna Take this in a turn or two there so it just kind of makes. That'll slip in on the outside. Like so. Make sure I'm square. And I can tighten that hex screw up in there. Now on the outside, this is where your feet go. This being one of the feet. And it goes like this. You'll see that it'll line up with a hole in the end of the extrusion and the set screw for holding your laser tight. Okay, this is where we have to do what I call a reload. If you look here at the assembly instructions, you'll notice that the x-axis carriage, or I should say uh, extrusion, is on the inside of the y-axis parts in this picture. But when the, you look at the picture of the frame completed, you'll notice that the x-axis frame parts are on the outside of the y-axis extrusion. And I realized that as soon as I went to try to put one of the acrylic feet on because the hole in the end of this is, of the long pieces, is not threaded. So therefore I got to do a little bit of rework here. And it's just a process of swapping this so that it's the other way around. So that would be simply taking this piece back off and it will now go on this piece on the inside. And then this will go on the outside over here. So it'll go together like that. And they actually tell you to tighten these up on the inside last, but I'm going to do this as I go around the laser. Because now the acrylic feet will go on like this. One hole will be in that bracket. And the other one will screw into the end of this extrusion right here.
Again, remember we're upside down. So these will be pointing up. Now I need to swap the other end around where the motherboard is and get the extrusion swapped around the other direction. Okay, next here we're going to work on the x-axis belt. For the x-axis extrusion, I've got it held under my arm here. So you want the belt to follow in the horizontal track here. And this is going to be a little bit fiddly too. Because you're going to want it to be on the tracks on both sides. So if you look at it from the end, it'll look like this here. And preferably without the loop in it. This side where you see the uh, pieces of belt sticking out will be the side that faces the motherboard. Okay, next we're going to be adding the separate motor to this. This is going to be confusing. You look here, this is up. That's the top. If you look at the stepper motor here, the stepper motor will be up. There's a couple little hammerhead nuts here, a couple screws you're going to loosen to slide that into the bottom of the extrusion. But before you do that, you're going to have to remove this gear on the bottom of the stepper motor. And the, uh, the wrench they give you does fit it. I'm going to use my ball end driver here because it's easier for me to use. It's a little set screw in there. Just loosen the set screw up. You don't have to take the screw clear out. This actually, this one has two set screws. And the gear just slips off. And you got to remember which side goes up. The small flange goes up towards the motor. So now you'll need to loosen these screws here. Don't take them all the way out. All you have to do is loosen them up. Enough so you can get those hammerhead nuts to slide there. Turn them both vertical. You'll slide this into the bottom of the extrusion. Now make sure you back your screws out far enough. You're going to want your belt to go around that shaft. Hope you can see what I'm doing here because this is really fiddly. Make sure you pull yourself enough belt up here to get around that shaft. I'm actually caught on the other end. Yeah, once you have that around the shaft, put your pulley back on. There's a flat side on that stepper motor. You want to make sure one of your set screws lands on that. And once that's done, make sure you don't have too many twists in your belt. And I got a bunch of them. I'll have to straighten them out as we go here. Obviously you want the two sides towards that pulley. Don't let it get the other way around. We can tighten up these two screws right here. Next thing you're going to have to do is make sure there's no twists in your belt. And it is frustrating to get all them out of there because that was just all kinds of twisted up. Okay, on the other end here will be what they call the belt tensioner, And hopefully that belt will stay where I put it. That's this guy right here. And you have a series of hammerhead nuts here. You've got two on the base plate and then two on this other bracket and they go on each side of the extrusion. This side will be going up as you look at this upside down. So right now this is upside down. So this will go mount like this. So you need to loosen these four screws here. Don't take them all the way out, just get them loose enough so you can slide this on the extrusion. So the goal here is to get this belt wrapped around this idler pulley 
and then slide this in. And I can tell you right now you're going to have to take those hammerhead screws out and drop the nuts down into the slots and then put them back in because you're not going to get it the other way. So not a big deal. Take those two screws out. I'll rotate this out of the way a little bit. Slide these two guys in there. I'll do the same on the other side. Again, trying not to get my belt all twisted up at the same time. Okay, an alternative method here would have been to have taken this post screw out, taken that apart, slid this in. You're still going to have to get the belt around the pulley. Uh, I can see that with the spacers and everything in here, that get to be just a little too fiddly. That's why I took these screws out and uh, just put it back together. So that wasn't, that wasn't too bad at all. Okay, so now the end with the stepper motor will go down at the same end as the motherboard, which is right down here. It's probably a little bit out of camera view. And this just simply sets on these studs that stick up. Of course, you'll have a little plug to plug in right here for your limit switch. Do that while you've got easy access. Now, this is keyed. You only go in there one way, so don't try to force it. It'll slip right in like so. Then I'm going to start the nuts down here and then I'll go down to the other end. That's what these nuts here are for they give you. I'm just trying to reach down the other end. That's too, a little bit too far of a reach. You shouldn't need any tools to tighten these up. You should be able to just do it by hand. Now I'll flip this around to the other end. Next step in the book is to tell you to assemble this protective cover to the laser head, but that's already done, so we don't need to do that part. So next we'll be putting the slider on. Get this unpackaged. Okay, for this slider here, this is going to have to mount to the laser head, and it uses three screws. And you're going to have to take this little cover off right here to put that on the laser and then put this back together. Uh, in the hardware package, there's two longer screws and two nylon spacers. That's to mount this to the carriage. Then they give you two shorter screws here to mount the laser. It really needs to be three. But uh, I'm going to take this cover off and we'll see what we got here. Uh, two M&M's if you're keeping track there. These are very short screws so watch you don't lose anything. Of course the knurled knob up here will go to the top of your laser head. So you got to keep track of how you take this apart so you can put it back together the same way. Not have it upside down. So this little bracket comes off the back here, and it sits on the back of the laser, and I need to find some holes that line up. There's only two that line up, so maybe that's why they only give you two screws there. There's no other combination, so that must be why you only get two screws. So you'll be using the shorter one here, two of them. Boy, a magnetic screwdriver would be nice here. Now your bracket will go back on. You know, when you look at the back of this, this is this is a front here, which is actually going to be facing away from you on the on the travel. But right here are the top two screws. There's two screw holes in here, slots. So you're going to have to put a screw through that acrylic, 
put on a spacer and then thread into this. This is going to be a little bit fiddly. Once your screw is in there and a the spacer goes on it, and that threads into the back of this. And I'm just starting that till I get the other one in. As I said, this is a little fiddly. Oh, there we are, finally. You'll have this other really long cable. It's going to go to the Y-axis motor at the other end. And we'll get to dressing these cables up here later, but here again, it's going to be the same thing. This is keyed. It only plugs in one way. Okay, there's one more to look at, and that's this one right here. That's the one that's not marked. There's a little slot here at the bottom. It needs to pass through that slot and plug into the bottom of that little limit switch circuit board. Again, it's keyed. It only goes in one way. You get it correct, it'll slip right in. Last remaining cable coming off your, your stepper motor board, or I should say your limit switch board. It's a multi-purpose board. Some of the circuit passes through. This goes to your laser module. And this again, it's keyed. It only plugs in one way. There's two open places up there. One's a three pin and one's a two pin. This goes into the three pin. And I got to figure out some cable management here on this. But that's going to be right in my work. I have to figure something out on that. Make sure I've got good travel all the way. Everything looks good and works smooth. May try to dream up a drag chain for that. Okay, I've got this upside down here to show uh, routing the motherboard cable. And I could have done this earlier. This uh, fits right down inside the channel, and I'm going to make it stay there by using a couple of zip ties. This will have to pass around the foot on this side so that you will have adequate travel over there. This might stay in there. I'm still going to put a couple zip ties on it just to make sure. And I probably won't use the ones that came with it because they're kind of wonky looking. Okay, so that's all the rest of the assembly, but I know you're going to want to see this thing turned on. So while I'm waiting for that computer to boot up, I do have a USB cable connected. I unpacked the power supply here. I will say this, this power cord is like really short. I was surprised it was that short. But I'll get that plugged in. This plugs into the face of it up here. I got a little power strip over here I can connect this to. Yeah, I've just got a little scrap piece of plywood in here to, uh, to do a little bit of a, a test on. We'll, the next video will go into the whole thing on setting it up in software and putting in all the settings and that. Just going to do a little bit of a test here to make sure it works. One thing I will note that is this is going to have a power switch. When you plug it in, you turn it on. It turns on. When you unplug it, it shuts off. So there's no power switch on it, just so you know. The focal length from the shield to the work is 7 millimeter for this. This is a 10 watt head, 10 watt output head. They do not give you a focusing plate, so you're going to have to have something that's 7 millimeters thick. I just happen to have one from another laser, so I'll need to set that under there. And then I can move my laser down till it just touches it. So there's our focal length set. Here for my initial test here, I've got this open and laser gerbil just to make it simple. Uh, I can move it, I want to check the different axis, move each direction, I'm using 10 millimeter increments, so that's all good. It's got a little focus light for the beam, it, that works just fine. I will say that the shield on there, on the bottom here, should actually be the other way around, but that's okay. I can always flop that. There was my starting point. Yeah, let me load up a file here quick. Take one off of the card they supplied. Just going to use one of their uh, Z Bay 2 logo here. Just uh, something simple and quick. 
So you always want to frame your work first to make sure it's going to be on your board. Trying a homie just to see what it'll do. It did stop there. It hung there. Okay, so it works. Uh, there's a couple of things here. One is this limit switch over here on the X Travel has nothing to hit. It's just an open space under there. I don't know what the design issue is there. Um, I'd like it better if that head was on this side. Uh, the other thing I don't like is this. I really need to figure out something to do with that. The uh, travel over here on the y-axis, that all runs on the outside, so that's not a problem. What's been running over here is, is staying on the outside, so that's not a problem. Update! Now, don't know where I'm going to put this, or I'm going to put it into the assembly video or put it into the next one. But at any rate, I had a couple of issues. One was the limit switch over here on the X-Travel. There was nothing for it to, nothing to trip it. So, how did I fix that? Well, kind of a temporary thing. Duct tape. Fixes anything. So, a couple little pieces of duct tape on there. It now homes perfectly. And yes, there is a lemon switch on the white travel. It's on the back of the motherboard. And that functions perfectly. However, I mentioned earlier about wanting to turn this laser head around this way for better view or whatever. And that's not going to work because if I do that, then the carriage will not hit that limit because of the way this is constructed. And that's fine. But I do need to take this shield off of here and turn it around the other way. So what else have I found fooling around with this? Now let me zoom you in on a little quick sign I did here. So I did this little sign and this, uh, I just did a line engrave. I didn't do a fill like I usually do. But you can see that the letters are very jagged. And what I saw was happening was on the X Travel, I was running this at 6,000 millimeters per minute. I mean, I had the thing cranked up. So I wanted to see how, what it would do. And you can see how rough things are here. Well, what is happening is the belt is not tight enough on the uh, gantry up here. So even though I have this pulled as tight as I could get it all the way out to be able to still put the, uh, get this in view here. So even though I have this pulled as tight as I could get this and still be able to get it onto the post here, the belt is too loose. So what I'm going to need to do, this guy back over here, so I'm going to have to loosen these screws up right here and take a couple notches out of the belt and make it a little bit tighter. It's going to be a little bit of a hassle, but uh, i got to fix that because it, it's just way too loose in there. In fact, the, the old... Uh, it's not twisted, but it's got curled a little bit, and it's just too sloppy, so i got to work on that. Nuts on the back of that, by the way. There's my little fix with the duct tape. Um, actually, I may add another layer to that. Make it a little bit more rigid. I'll cut a piece of acrylic or something for that later on. I was kind of surprised that that got overlooked because there's just no place for that limit switch to stop. So make that a little bit stiffer. Now I'll get my belt tension set again.
much better. Okay, so while I have this upside down, I'm going to turn this shield around. Since this is the side that faces me and this notch is here, that really needs to be towards the back. And it looks like this head was designed to be on a laser where it mounted on the other side of the gantry. Not a big deal, just take these four screws loose to turn the thing around. Just give it a little 180 and... Well, that's a different kind of lens there. Generally, there's a lens that sticks up here that you could, like, clamp an air assist to. This one is integral inside the unit. Okay, I get this turned back around, and uh, I like it better that way. Still don't like this. I've got to really figure something else out for that. that that's going to be in the way. So let's see if this will come home and stop. Perfect. Now I'll take this back out and I'll do that same sign. We'll frame this here. We'll see if this does any better. As I said, we're working, running at 6,000 millimeters per minute, so I got her cranked up here. One thing I noticed right away is I don't have a whole bunch of slop on that belt. So I was watching that belt just bounce all over the place before. Okay, much better. I don't have all them wavy, jaggy lines like I had before. The things you see here on the sides of the letters are supposed to be there as part of the design. And my tires look better now. At least now they're round. My truck window isn't all crooked. So that made a huge difference. Well, just a couple of minor fixes. It wasn't a big deal. It just needed to have a little bit of tweaking on that belt tension. Of course, the uh, limit switch stopped down here. Uh, I don't know why there's nothing there to hit the limit switch. It's just an open space. And like I said, fix it with duct tape. Fix a lot of things with this stuff. But that's temporary. I'll probably cut a piece of acrylic and put in there. To have a good positive stop so it's now at homes and I can set it to home on startup so I just want to add these couple little fixes in there switching the shield around that kind of thing um, yeah I just made this video even longer but fix some problems this here though that's I gotta figure something out for this some kind of drag chain or something maybe I can create something on a 3d printer because uh, this cable is going to be hanging into my work when I do these long signs. I can see that's going to be a problem. But I'll figure something out here. Okay, so as you saw as I was putting this together, there were a couple of issues. Uh, one of those being the limit switch on the x-axis right here. Uh, when you look at the manual and look close at the pictures, the limit switch in those pictures has a long post sticking out that would contact the bottom wheel on the gantry. The one I got here that was shipped has a very, had a very short one, so what I did was I cut a small piece of acrylic, as you can see here, and then hot glued it in place. And then to fiddle around with it a little bit, I did add a little tiny thin wood shim to the end so that it would make this perfect. So there's one thing you need to look at. Another thing you need to look at is how the laser head is mounted. Normally, on a, when you put a laser together, I don't care what brand it is, this laser head is facing you on the side of the control board. In this case, it's designed to go on the other side. So no, that's not backwards. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, you can look at the pictures in your manual, and you can look at their video and see that, yes, it belongs on that side. So that's another thing you need to look at. 
Uh, and also in doing my test here, this is uh, supposed to be 400 by 800 working area. It is definitely 800 this way. I've run frames on it and just doing a tooling square. 400 stops short. I can actually go 500 millimeter. And I could probably go a little bit more if I wanted to. But it does have a, a, an actual 500 by 800. may even be 550. I haven't pushed it any farther. But the, uh, other than that, the, the limit switches work just fine now that I've done this little adjustment. Okay, another thing you will notice is I had to tighten the timing belt right here by loosening these screws and just pulling it up an extra notch because I couldn't quite get enough travel here to get this tight. Not a big thing. Uh, I assume at the factory when they put these together they have just kind of a, it's well it's about here kind of thing. And I, all my lasers, you need to adjust the belt. So that's not unusual. And the last little thing I want to cover here is on the assembly of the frame. If you look at one picture in the manual, they're positioned one way, but if you look at the picture on the next page, they're positioned the other way. So pay close attention to which piece goes where. You'll see in the video where I actually had it put together backwards first because I was looking at the first picture and had to move it around. There will be more videos coming up on this laser as I use it to make my long signs and perhaps a few other things. I do need to make a baseboard for this, mount it to uh, the board and then create a spoil board so I have a grid. Of, I'm going to actually have to create the grid for this because of the large format. Um, I don't know of anybody that's already made one. So I guess I'll have to make my own. I've done it before. It's just a little bit time consuming. I'll be mounting this to a board using some 3D printed feet such as this. Except this isn't big enough. This is what I use on uh, quite a few of my other lasers that have aluminum legs. The aluminum legs are quite a bit thinner. They're only you know two, about two millimeter. These are look like to be between three and four millimeters thick. So got to design some with a little bit wider slot. That's not a big thing. And this is something that uh, well, you could kind of find it on Thingiverse if you have a 3D printer or you can make your own. So overall, what do I think here so far? Well, the laser performs well. It does well now that I've made the uh, belt adjustments. This is still kind of a nuisance here. And I had one instance where I was auto homing and the cable actually got back and got between the plate and the limit switch and stopped too soon. So I'm definitely going to be addressing and doing something here to deal with this not getting down in my work. Uh, on the test pieces I've done, I've watched this very close so I didn't get, you know, down under here. That'd be a disaster. So that's the only real takeaway I have about the design of this. Uh, otherwise, uh, the other takeaway, of course, was the assembly instructions are there, but they are not 100% clear, and it's like some of the pictures are for a different laser. So you need to really pay attention to some of the things I did. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the shop. Sebetu M81. Yes, they did provide this to me to test and demonstrate. And that's what I'm doing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.